on camera. Hey, today is March the 4th, 2016. My name is Roger Soysept. I'm a volunteer at the Atlanta History Center. Uh, with me is uh, Sue Verhoff, the senior archivist at the History Center. And we're here today at the Brookwood facility, is that? Brookdale. Brookdale, sorry. <laughs> uh, to record the oral history of Mr. Alan Weiss. Uh, he served in the U.S. Navy during World War II. And his oral history is being recorded for the Library of Congress Veterans History Project. Uh, we're honored to have you with us here today, Mr. Weiss, and uh, for participating in the project. Uh, let's begin with you telling us your full name and where you live. Okay. Uh, my name is Alan Weiss. Uh, I live at uh, Brookdale uh, Senior Living, uh, Assisted Living. Uh, the, the address is, I think, 1260, uh, uh, what's the road? Hightower. Huh? Hightower. Hightower, yeah. Hightower, uh, uh, not road. Trail. Hightower Trail. There you go. And, uh, it's a very, very nice, uh, facility. Uh, I'm sure there are better, I'm sure there are worse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to begin uh, with your story, then, where did you grow up? Oh, I grew up in a community uh, in Brooklyn, in, in, not in Brooklyn, but uh, not far from Brooklyn, but uh, in, on Long Island, uh, and uh, uh, a community called Far Rockaway. And it's unbelievable how many people grew up in Far Rockaway because you mentioned Far Rockaway in, in some area that you happen to be in. Oh, Far Rockaway, I know that. I don't know that. Which uh, always uh, is uh, you know nice to know. Uh, but uh, there are very, some very famous people who grew up far, in Far Rockaway, in the, especially in the... Uh, in the theater. Um, anyway. Uh, what year were you born, sir? Huh? What year were you born? I was born 1924. 24. Yeah. So you would have uh, grown up, well, you were still quite young when oh, the yes. Depression was on. I was 17 when I enlisted in the, uh, in the Navy, and I think okay. that was fairly young. Uh, and the Lord at the time was... Uh, a year younger, she was 16. Uh, were I didn't you, get married uh, until I came back from overseas. Were you in college at the... Huh? Were you in college? I was in college uh, for uh, just a semester until I enlisted. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I went to college uh, <laughs> to be able to enlist, but I didn't, I, I didn't really do that. I uh, I was in college when I knew that I wanted to get into the Navy because we used to, they used to have all kinds of, uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call them, uh, rallies for the different, uh, for the different uh, military uh, and uh, mine... Uh, came one day when uh, we were, pl were playing a, a, uh, a game and then the, uh, they, they allowed these people to come on the field after the game and, and make their appeal to uh, have you come to their particular uh, venue. Uh, and uh, I found uh, that uh, it made no difference. I still wanted to do, do, do what I wanted to do. Well, how did that come about? Uh, well, I was about six years old uh, when that, uh, that happened. There was a, uh, uh, a family that we were very friendly with, uh, an Italian family, and uh, they, uh, they had a daughter who was being going to be married. And we were invited to the wedding. Well, we're all sitting up in the in the in the bleachers, I would say, 
And uh, here comes this great man, looked like a beautiful man, you know, and he had his, his gold wings on, and uh, I looked at him and I said, I want to do that someday, you know? <laughs> so so uh, that, was, uh, that was the beginning. And it never, it never ended. Uh, so uh, when the time came time uh, to enlist, I was able to enlist in uh, when I was at uh, the college at uh, in in, uh, in Raleigh. So I did I did go through the enlistment uh, procedure. In fact, I went through the enlistment procedure more than once. I went to the enlistment procedure uh, in uh, in college. I went through the enlistment procedure when, after high school, and uh, finally uh, I was accepted, uh, and they sent me to uh, back to uh, North Carolina, and uh, there we we uh, we had uh, uh, a, a a it was called. ATL um, uh, War Service uh, War Service Cadets. And we didn't wear a, a regular uh, Navy uniform. We had like the old uh, uh, greens that they had for uh, uh, some of the, uh, the the people who who worked in the uh, in the field. But uh, we we were we, we were given these greens to wear, and uh, we were still proud of them. It was a uniform, uh, and in that small place that is the 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 airfield that we we uh, were uh, working at, uh, we learned to fly. Uh, when I say small were airfield. A, were you in a flight program at this point? Had you already volunteered? For no, 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 this is, I don't know what they called it, but uh, we were, uh, we, we flew. We flew Piper Cubs. And uh, oh, it was fun. I, I think it was really great to learn, to learn how to fly, and, uh, especially, you know, flying eight hours and, 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 uh, uh, Actually, uh, being able to solo after eight hours, which is a great feeling, soloing. Oh, my God! <laughs> the, you know, you went through all these, all the ground training, at the same place that uh, we we flew, and uh, we had a great time uh, at this at, at North Carolina State. No, it wasn't North Carolina State. It was it was at the University of North Carolina, uh, and uh, we flew eight hours. And if you were uh, if you were uh, capable, uh, the uh, it was up to the it was up to the uh, your flight instructor as to whether or not. You're going to uh, uh, fall, uh, solo or not? When my when my instructor told me I should get back in the plane, I know you know your heart starts to starts to beat. So so I did. I got back in the plane. I had make three landings and three takeoffs. And at that point, you know, you're a pilot, which uh, which was great feeling. But yes, there was a lot ahead of me. I mean, just just to fly an airplane is is one thing, and really not not too difficult. Uh, but uh, but the, the, what went ahead was was all of the uh, the technical things that you had to learn, and uh, these things came uh, through different uh, courses that we we take. Uh, we enjoyed it uh, very much, and uh, 
Yeah, you made friends, and uh, you, that's about that's about it for that. Were there any accidents in the course of this training? No, not no. Everybody not, did good. Not at this time, thank God. We had uh, some good pilots, good men, and uh, uh, I don't know if anybody washed out. Well, it wasn't a great big class. It was a, you know, a fairly small class. Maybe a, uh, six or eight hmm. in the class. About what year would that have been? And this was, <laughs> that's a good question. I am terrible on, 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 on years, but uh, let's see if we can figure it out. I was uh, about 17, going on 18. In fact, I was 18. I made 18 while I was in school, uh, from 17 to 18. And uh, what was the question again? So that was about 1942 <laughs> then? Was it 1942? Yeah, yeah 1942. Yeah, it was the same year, that's right, the same year I graduated high school, right? Uh, from there, we went to uh, a training place, a real uh, 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 air training facility which was in, uh, I can't remember now. I must be getting old. <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't you believe it. I can't remember the dawn. Was it in Florida? Huh? What did no, it wasn't in, in Florida. Florida. It wasn't in Florida. It was in the Midwest. It was in, uh, mm. can't remember. But there it was that was that was uh, became my uh, I forgot what they call it uh, more than basic training. It was uh, uh, already you know you, you got into a plane that was that was already being had been used in the war, uh, and it was you know, it was it was a thrill to be flying such a such a plane. And uh, in that that uh, series of uh, of uh, of learning, uh, we learned a lot about the aircraft itself, and uh, we learned uh, uh, really how to fly and uh, how to do. Uh, it, it was what, this was the the uh, Yellow Pearl, if you know what that was. The old the, the, by biplane, and uh, we used to do crazy aerobatics, uh, aerobatics in this plane. And you, you can you can you can spin it. Hmm. Uh, you can put it into a dive and 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 uh, uh, and do spins in the dive itself. And then you know, and then no one to pull out. Uh, there, are some people you, you may have, you may have lost some uh, some people, in you know, in, in that not in my unit, but uh, I I heard that they did. Uh, of course, as you as you get uh, more into into flying and, and more uh, things that you have to learn to do, uh, it becomes a lot more technical. And uh, that was about uh, in that era, that, that era, that we learned uh, a lot about the plane because we did, we, we wrecked, almost wrecked the plane in the air, you know, you can, you can do anything with that plane. I mean, rolls, snap rolls, uh, 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 what else, uh, any other, uh, Thing you wanted to do with that airplane. If you knew the controls, you can do it. But that was that was a that was a great time. Mm. From there, 
we went to a more advanced uh, uh, f training field. That was when I went to, uh, after I got my wings, this is all, you know, a lot of it's after you get your wings, but uh, after I got my wings, I was at uh, uh, Pensacola from uh, the, 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 air, plane, the, the field that I was at. Per before this, uh, we, a bunch of us went to Pensacola and uh, I got into real uh, uh, you know, planes that uh, they flew uh, at the time in in uh, in the war effort. <clears throat> uh, and my plane was the SBD. Uh, SBD is was was the. Uh, was the, it was the, the formal number, and uh, it was it was a it was built by Curtis. It's called the Curtis Helldiver. Uh, learning how to fly this plane was uh, was another uh, another uh, step up. Because each time, you know, each, each, each step you took in the aircraft become bigger and more powerful. So each each step that we took from little Piper Cubs to the to this grand uh, SB two C Hell the uh, Hell uh, Curtis Hell Diver uh, was really quite a quite a thing, and we this is where we learned uh, things about the airplane and 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 myself about. Uh, how to how to fly onto a deck? Now each every time we whatever we learned, it was towards getting into a, a an aircraft and then flying in onto a a deck, uh, make landings on the deck, and uh, in that way, when it, when it came to flying uh, uh, aboard a ship, at least we had some idea. Actually, flying on the deck was out in uh, it was on on Lake Michigan. Yeah, they had a they, they had this this uh, this flat top on on Lake Michigan for years, and uh, they used that as as training for for uh, for flying onto uh, a, a carrier. Did that one move around very much? Yeah, it moved. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a regular ship, had, with, the, with the deck cleared, yeah. and uh, they used that for uh, for carrier practice. Carrier, you know, you had to make uh, three landings and three takeoffs uh, on the you know to the carrier, and uh, the, I was I was running low on fuel. On the third, you know, come come to the third. The reason being is that they set this up. They were having problems down below, so they sent us up to do a little, uh, do a little flying, before we came back down. And I'm, I'm losing, I'm losing fuel all the time. So I told the guy when I on my last uh, uh, landing, I said, "I'm down, I'm down to air." So he said, "You just go, take it, go home. That's that's all." And that was the thing. I had a takeoff. And leave that ship behind, and and find my way back to uh, I forgot the airfield name, but uh, uh, I had to get back to the airfield. And here I'm, I'm praying that uh, I don't I don't I don't uh, you know, lose my air my 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 any airspeed. Anyway, uh, I didn't make it back without first calling in. Telling him to get some, uh, some, some the squad ready on the ground, uh, and uh, as I'm as I landed, my engine actually stopped after I landed, so you know that was a a good thing. That was one uh, an experience that I'll never forget. Uh, more and all, it's still quite an experience. Uh, so let's see.
Were you were assigned to a carrier after this then? Yes. Okay. Uh, a friend of mine and myself was assigned to the Hancock uh, CV-19. Uh, I guess it became CVA-19 after a while. And where was it? Well, we had to wait. Uh, we had to wait uh, on. We were on Guam for quite a while, waiting for the aircraft to be uh, to be ready. Well, uh, apparently, for some reason, or other, I don't know how it worked out, but eventually, after a month on Guam, uh, they got this uh, friend of mine and I uh, were taken uh, to uh, a place, and they. They put us on a, uh, what we called the Jeep Carrier. It was a carrier that was used in the transport of, of materials and stuff, uh, much smaller than a, a, a regular carrier. <coughs> anyway, we, we were on this Jeep Carrier for a few days, and uh, we were told we were going to be transported over to our, our, our regular carrier, which was uh, the Hancock. Well, uh, Going to the uh, the carrier, we had to first go on a uh, uh, a uh, destroyer. I had been on a destroyer before, but you no, know, just for a ride. But this time, it's when the big storms in the South Pacific came up. And in fact, some of the it was they, so 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 strong that uh, uh, the front of a carrier had its its uh, it, it had the the bow of the of the carrier, which uh, the, the flight deck was just uh, you know across the bow, and the the, the flight deck was actually. Turned, crossed out, uh, from front to back, it was just just uh, turned over. I don't know uh, what happened on the carrier itself at that time, but it wasn't the carrier that I was going on. And uh, we had to go to carrier by breeches buoy from from the the, the, uh, the from the the tr destroyer. To the cat, to the other carrier, and it was still it was still quite rough, but we got into, got into the breaches buoy. It was uh, <laughs> you know you're going up and down and until they finally get you across. This is kind of like a ski lift. Huh? Kind of like a ski lift. You yeah. know what a ski lift does? You know, carries people up the. Like up a the ski mountain. lift? Yeah. Well, like no, I guess it is, but uh, it's you're, you're actually in. In these, in, in, sitting in this, uh, this, uh, uh, it's almost like a uh, a ring, like a uh, ring with with pants, you know. Okay. So you're you're, you're pretty steady in there, and uh, and the wind's blowing. What about sixty miles an hour? Everything's going on. <laughs> everything's, everything's going on. You you wonder are you going to get across? But yeah, it took took a little time to get across, but they they did, and uh, it was it was finally got onto our carrier. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, the day that we were brought to the carrier, that first day was an awakening. We had. Uh, one of our planes was carrying a 500-pound uh, bomb and uh, had been off on a mission and uh, came back with the bomb stuck up in the bomb bay. Mm. Now, uh, just to, to explain, uh, when you have a, uh, a bomb, it, it can't be armed unless the propeller on the bomb has to be uh, uh, 
motivated. And uh, until it, uh, you know, might go off. It's, it's, it's like uh, it arming a to, bomb. It has to spin a certain number of times to arm it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, like, uh, you know, like uh, if you armed it on, on shore, it's the same thing. Uh, same bomb. <clears throat> and it won't go off until you get so many revolutions going on that. Well, unfortunately, this bomb was uh, ready. And uh, it went off on the flight deck. Oh. And it wiped out the whole flight deck. So that was another thing that they had to con concern themselves with. <clears throat> and, uh, and this was on the Hancock? On the Hancock, yeah. Oh, uh, it's amazing how they work, though, to, to uh, prepare and, and fix these things that happen, unfortunately. And unfortunately, the next day there was a burial at sea for all these people who were, who were uh, killed. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, can, I can see it very plainly in my mind's eye, uh, the, the bodies laid out uh, on, the, on the flight deck. Uh, no, it, wasn't, it, was, it, was, it was just below the flight deck. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, I can see them as they as they dump each each uh, body over individually. How you know, many? And, I, and they mention the name, and you know, and they uh, and uh, our our admiral was there. Forgot who his name was at the time. Uh, and that's, uh, that's the story of that. And uh, of course, my first, my first landing, uh, we, were, we were waiting uh, in the, in the, uh, um, in the uh, not in the, in, in the men's, uh, it's on somebody's, somebody's, somebody's uh, uh, place that we, uh, that we lived. I'm trying to think what happened there. Um, can't remember. Well, the first big remember. campaign, uh, you were involved with Iwo Jima. The, uh, what? You were involved with Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima? Yeah. Yes, we hit, uh, uh, we flew well, Iwo Jima uh, uh, to keep the, actually, we, flew, we were the, uh, we were the lines, line of defense that, uh, an offense. We tried to uh, keep the, the, uh, Japanese back uh, as they were com coming, you know, as, as our men were coming, coming from uh, ship to shore. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but uh, all we did was was a lot of strafing to keep, you know, to keep the the uh, the uh, uh, the front open for our men. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was pretty tough. For them, yeah. Uh, your aircraft was intended to be a uh, basically. You you drop bombs. Yes. Uh, how big a bomb would you carry? How many would you carry? Oh, we would carry a, a, either two five hundred pound bombs, one on each wing, or a thousand pound bomb on the on the bomb bay, okay. and. Uh, 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 my, I, I carried at the time two, two 500 pound bombs on my mission. Now, my mission uh, damn this thing. We had one mission at that point 
And that was to hit Japan with a bomb from the United States. And I don't know, you know, how many, how many, how many uh, uh, groups were involved in it, but I know our air group uh, went uh, as far in as, uh, as Tokyo. Some of our fighter planes got in there mm -hmm. and uh, had a, uh, uh, a time with the, with the Japanese. <clears throat> but uh, at that point, the Japanese uh, pilots uh, had, had, had their, uh, uh, their uh, what can I say? Uh, they weren't as, 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 as sharp as they should be by that time. And uh, our men were always getting better. So uh, they, had a, they had a, what they call a turkey shoot out there. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, and my, uh, my uh, group, the, uh, the bombers, the dive bombers, went out in a group of 12, uh, and I was what called SN Charlie. <laughs> the last, you know, the youngest, youngest uh, and, uh, uh, ensign, <laughs> and they always put him on the, on the rear end. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, uh, we, did the, we did the bomb drop, and uh, I saw no, no, uh, no, no uh, uh, fire coming up back at, back at us, but uh, we bombed Japan. That was the main thing, to charge a bomb. We went in as far as we could. We didn't get to Tokyo, but uh, we did bomb Japan. This would be up to about 1945 now. Uh, we're talking about uh, yeah, we're talking about uh, 19 uh, f no less than 45. It's still in the uh, our, my early stage, as far as 43, 44. You know, okay. all in the same area. I just I just I'm lousy with dates. <laughs> just just lousy. Well, how long before the end of the war? You know, how long were you bombing Japan uh, before the end of the war? How long before yeah. the end of the war? Yeah. Well, they were bombing them up until the end of the war. Well, I mean, was yeah. it for like a year, two years? Oh, they didn't stop bombing Japan uh, just <laughs> like that. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I don't know, I don't know uh, exactly when they stopped. Uh, but uh, it may have been... Uh, a year or two before, okay. but I can't, uh, I can't remember that. It's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what point did you get promoted? What? You got promoted from I got, Yeah, I got the Air Medal, which uh, most, most the pilots would get if, he, mm -hmm. if they were in service at that time, I mean, and, and were, were in, uh, in a battle. Uh, or you know where there was uh, where there was a battle going on, so I got the air medal, and uh, at that same I got uh, Lieutenant J G, also at that time. I understand your your brother. Irwin was in the Navy. Oh too. yeah, no, he was in the Army. In the Army. Army Air Corps. Army. Yeah, Irwin was uh, quite a guy. He's three years older than me, and uh, got his wings as a as a as an air, as a, as a uh, fighter pilot. Uh, not only him at the time, but a good friend of mine at the time also. Uh, got his wings as a, uh, as a, a, a pilot and a, uh, uh, they, uh, 
they were in the uh, the eastern uh, in, over in China, uh, hmm. and uh, my brother. This has nothing to do with with my with my my friend. Of course, I don't know how how you know what happened to him, but he was also killed. Uh, but my brother uh, was uh, actually escorting big bombers, and uh, uh, one day over New Guinea, uh, he just was he was you know he's escorting a bomber, and, a, and one of the one of the blasts that he was you know trying to avoid hit him, and he went down. There was no reason for it. They were going after the bomber. But he happened to fly, fly into the flak. Yeah. To uh, gain the Air Medal, how many missions did you have to fly, or was there anything specific no. about that? No, they, they, just, they just issued it. Really? <laughs> yeah, and just issued. As he as he went up higher, of course, there was a lot more involved. But uh, I wasn't in it long enough to uh, to avail myself the opportunity to get any more medals. So, so you weren't thinking of a career as a Navy pilot. Huh? You weren't planning to stay in to. Sure. No, I never was planning to stay in. No. Okay. No. When the time came to go out, I figured, well, it's time to get out and get, get married and start a family. Uh, so we, it was uh, close to my birthday again uh, that uh, uh, I got out. October 40, 45, I guess it was. This was my birthday. Well, speaking of your wife, when did you, did you already knew your wife? You already knew? We were in the high school together. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we met in high school. Yeah. And uh, we were uh, together for, uh, you know, a couple of years. And after I came back from, uh, from uh, uh, the South Pacific, I asked if she wanted to get married. Good. <laughs> well, we got married. Yeah, where was this? Where did you get married? It was in, I can't see. I can't remember. <laughs> well, where did you go to live? Huh? Where did you go to live after you were married? Can you hear me? Where did you go to live? Oh. Uh, after we got married, which was a, a pretty big wedding, uh, my mother and mother-in-law, we, we couldn't send out an invitation because it was a very short time from the time I, I got back from overseas till the time of, of the wedding, uh, which was in April, and, uh, April 15th. Uh, but uh, after we got married, we went to live first with uh, with my parents for uh, a little while, and uh, for some reason or other, we, we had to go to her parents. We lived in her parents for a while because they had a, they had the, they had the bed uh, available uh, in my mother's place. We had to take a uh, one of these things that fold out, you know, and. Pulled in, pulled out every day, so it was it was good to be in just in a bedroom. <laughs> well, at this point, you're out of the navy. You're married. Uh, what was your career? What did you? Oh, do? it was in sales. Whatever I did was was always in in sales. Uh, I sold. Uh, of course, my father was was a clothing manufacturer. Uh, he used to make uh, uh, men's clothing. And uh, 
So I got into one of the, one of the uh, outfits that uh, made uh, children's clothes. Uh, and then finally we wound up, wound up with my father, of course, uh, he was getting, he, he and his partner weren't doing well together. So, we got, we, 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 we got uh, together and, uh, and, and uh, started this business where he was, already was, was located in this, this particular loft and had all the equipment that he needed to cut. They did the cutting in, in, in uh, where, he, where he had his loft and they sent out, uh, everything was sent out to a, a tailor to be, to be put together. That's the way it was in those days. That's what, that's how that's, uh, today they, they may do everything on the same, you know, in the same loft, which includes the, uh, the cutting and, uh, and the uh, trimming and the, uh, uh, and the, the uh, tailoring of the, of the uh, material. Well, at some point you apparently got into art. What's that? So at some point you became an artist. An artist? Oh no! That's a, <laughs> I saw. No, I saw some stuff similar to that. I said I can do that. <laughs> so I tried it and I did it. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. It came out pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, art was art happened to have been a uh, one of my favorite things. Uh, not that I ever took any courses, but I would like to have. Uh, I had a, an, an aunt who was quite an artist, and uh, but I never did. I never did, you know, uh, check into it and, and do it. But I should. I think she, one of the things I should have done. I was taking some courses and all. Seems to me you've done a lot. Huh? Seems to me you've done a lot. Well, it seems to me too. <laughs> <laughs> once, you, once you think about it. Yeah. I'd like to back up just a little bit, Mr. Weiss, yeah. to your carrier days. Can, yeah. Can you describe what a normal day on a carrier would have been like? How often did you fly? Where did you sleep? What did you eat? Yeah. What was that like? Yeah, well, actually, your, your flights were scheduled. So you knew when you were going out, whether it was morning, afternoon, or, or night. Uh, you, know, you, you know you had a flight, and you know you were ready for it. And when they called your flight, everybody went from the ready rooms uh, out to their planes and got into the planes and, and took off and formed a, 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 a squadron and uh, took off to where they had to go. Did you have fighter escort? When no, you we didn't have, not at that time. There may be fight, there have been fighters around, but not specifically to escort us. No. You guys took care of yourselves. Huh? You guys took care of yourselves, didn't you? Yeah, we had to. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, if you if you look at a uh, an SB two C with uh, it had uh, two twenty millimeter cannons in the wings, one on each side. Then it had my backup man, who was a radio man, radio technician. Uh, it was another story. Uh, uh, he had twin 30 caliber machine guns back there. So if you can figure a squadron or, or of, of, of these, uh, you know, dive bombers flying anywhere, and if they came, came into any part of our, our firepower, they were finished. But they knew, they knew better than to, to attack us. So, although there was some, always some crazy people. So uh, tell us about your radio operator. Yeah, my radio that. operator. I, you know, I, I happen to uh, uh, look at the board in, in, uh, in the ready room, and it showed uh, uh, names and where they came from. Uh, and I see uh, Rick, uh, Rick, uh, whatever his name was, 
uh, Rick Wheaton, yeah, uh, had it uh, Long Island, one of the one of the towns not far from where I live. So I said I'd like to like to have Rick uh, be my you know radio gunner, and he was. He was, he was good. So he's alive today. Oh, he, he was anyway. I haven't heard from him in a long time. Do you stay in touch with many of the people you knew in the Navy? What's that? Do you go to reunions? Do you stay in touch? Well, we did until, up until up, you know, the time when there were you know, so, so few that uh, yeah. you, couldn't, you, know, you couldn't get them to come anywhere. So, I have no idea how many are left. When was the last reunion you went to? Oh, it was in New York City. My, my there were reunions after I, uh, yeah. but this was in New York City at uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, lieutenant colonels. He wasn't a flyer, but uh, he was uh, part of the part of the uh, uh, the group. But, uh, we had a we always had some good times at these at these places these places. And what you know, what you read about it, I don't know whether it's, whether it was true, but uh, not in our not in our group anyway. <laughs> so what was it like being shot off the deck? Oh, here? that's what was that? You mean, like? you mean the, uh, the cat? Yeah, the uh, catapult. Well, I never flew off a deck. I was always catapulted because we were always up in front. They had a Clear the deck. So the the idea that you you uh, you're sitting in this in this plane, uh, your 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 control of, of the uh, your uh, gas control, which uh, was on the left, would actually be right in the crook of your hand, and you have it forward all the way you can get it. You know to get all the power you can. And you'd give him a salute when you were ready, and off you took, you know. And then you, it was up to you to stay, to stay flying. And it was, it was. I'll tell you, it was the first time you had a, your, your belly went, went through your mouth. But it was, it was. It became so, you know, it became a normal thing, just like dive bombing became a normal thing. Returning to the carrier. Yeah. Uh, you'd have these cables to help slow yeah. you down. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever missed the cable? A rusting gear. No. If you miss the cable, if you miss the cable, you went into a, a, a double cable up, up forward, that would, that would stop you. Oh, okay. Uh, so you wasn't like you'd go off the end. <laughs> no. No. There's, there's always some way of stopping the plane. Okay. Yeah. The only time we, we, we uh, had planes to off, off, off the deck was when they came back pretty well shot up or, or if something was wrong, they mm -hmm. just get it out of the way of the planes coming in. So they just couldn't, you couldn't yeah. just leave it there. Yeah. So they did throw it in the water. Got everybody out first, I guess, though. Huh? They got the people out first, then push it over yeah, the right. side. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah. That's about it, folks. How would you describe life living on a carrier? Uh, life on a carrier? Yeah. It's it very mundane. It, it, uh, it, it was uh, as if, uh, I don't know, you were, you were in a club somewhere and you're, and you're sitting and uh, gossiping and, and talking. We, everybody had their own ready room. You know, the, the bombers had their ready room, the fighters had their ready room. and. Uh, uh, you, you, most of your time would be sitting in the ready room waiting for your flight if you know you had a flight that uh, that day. Uh, reading, it's, you know, a lot of reading was done, and uh, some some guys uh, were, uh, as you say, were were artists, and they took time to, to do you know do some work like that. But whatever, it was you know whatever 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 uh, took your. Uh, your mind too. Wow. Any more? 
What? What you got there? Dan, Dan must have sent the message. He did. This says, Big Brother was in the Air Force. Dad went to Florida to see him, and that plane crashed in the Everglades. He survived the crash. He was 48 at the time. Was that you that... 48? No. Yeah. No, 48 years old. Oh. Oh, yeah. So... You went to Florida to see... Well, I went to Florida. Okay, Beth's brother. So your, your son? Yes. Your son was in the Air Force. He was in the Army Air Force, yes. And you went to Florida to see him? Uh, yes. He was in Florida at the time, and I went, I went to visit. I'll tell you, we never went to visit uh, together. Either she'd go and then I'd meet her if, if you know, depending upon plane connections. Uh, but uh, yes, Dan, uh, Dan was in Florida visiting my mother and uh, uh, I haven't had a chance. Uh, uh, Gloria had been there and come home by herself. Yeah. And I was going after, uh, Gloria said, why don't you go as long as he's there? And uh, you know, spend some time and, uh, you know, let it be uh, that way. So I did. I, uh, I decided to go and uh, uh, on uh, flight 401 uh, uh, and uh, flight 401 and it was a, uh, I'm trying to think of what, 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 what plane it was. But it was it was, it was a, a big a big aircraft, and uh, we ca were coming in for a landing in Miami, and for some reason or other uh, they took off again. They didn't. They never even landed, so they were given a place to uh, to circle up above. Um, the uh, the next thing we knew, uh, we weren't told anything, not a thing. But they, they were uh, uh, trying to fix the nose wheel hadn't come down and locked, according, according to the uh, you know, instruments. So they, that's why they sent them up to do the... Uh, in the meantime, the, everybody was 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 calm. They didn't, I mean, they didn't know really what was going on. But eventually, what was happening? Somebody had, you know, what the yoke is on a plane. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody had hit the yoke, uh, which was on uh, automatic. Uh, it didn't take much pressure to, to take it off automatic, and uh, the plane was in a slightly downward. No, uh, 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 nose down attitude, and uh, it was flying around in circles very slowly. And everybody from the cockpit went into this hole to see if they could fix this wheel. Well, they couldn't fix the wheel. They didn't even know what was happening up above. And they, they eventually flew into the, actually flew into the ground. And uh, mm. I must have been tossed, I don't know how far from the plane. But uh, luckily for me, I was on my back because it, it was water. And uh, oh my God. luckily I was on my back. And, uh, and as I heard people moving around, I lift up my leg. Was my, my right leg was the only thing that I could move, my right hand, one of left, left or right. And uh, eventually, I was there for, uh, from, must be midnight till about 5 a.m. In, in that, in the water. In the water? Yeah, you know, I was probably in and out of it most of the time. Were you in the fuselage of the aircraft, or were you out of it? Were you outside? I was out of, I was out of it. I could see over my shoulder, I could see the, the fuselage, 
uh, almost part of part of it was the skeleton that uh, you know had burned. Wow. Wow. Um, but they picked me up around five o'clock in the morning, and uh, I was freezing cold. Uh, and I, they, of course, they put me in an ambulance and uh, got me back. And I kept saying, I'm cold, I'm cold, I'm cold. <laughs> they said they had, they had the heat on, you know. <laughs> but uh, I got through that. Has anyone ever asked you if you have uh, any huh? Has anyone ever asked you about nine lives? <laughs> what that? Nine lives, you know, you keep on oh, surviving. Yeah. <laughs> That'll put you off flying a little yeah. bit. I bet you didn't really want to get in a plane after that. Huh? Oh, no, I had more. I had to lose love. Ready to go again. <laughs> Stupid me. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, oh, I was ready to fly again. Oh, my goodness. We had to fly back from, uh, from uh, Florida back to uh, yeah. Long Island. Wasn't, wasn't so bad. Not bad at all. Got to get some tape. What else can I do for you folks? Well, would you like to have any final thoughts that yeah. uh, you'd like to include in this recording? Well, you got this recording? Well, for the Library of Congress, uh, for your family, for anything that you'd like to say. Oh, for my family, they were they were just great. They would they would do anything for me uh, and uh, my other you know my other brothers unfortunately uh, my two brothers would, uh, had died and uh, it was an unfortunate uh, thing that they did because they were both very 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 terrific people my oldest brother died when he was 21 he uh, he had cancer, but he was an athlete beyond athletes. Uh, he was, uh, when he was just a kid, he was swimming for the, the, uh, the high school. He was in, still in public school. And there were a lot of, there were a lot of things that, uh, a lot of things that, uh, that he did in his life. Uh, he, was, he was a fancy board high diver. Uh, I mean that was water was water was always a, a thing in our family, and uh, got some pictures here. Yeah, I'm gonna bring over and let you share those on the camera. Tell us yeah. about this yeah, young man. This is Erwin. Unfortunately, uh, he's you short, short lived. Uh, that has uh, although he went, he, he must have been a. A hero, I would call him a hero. Turn it around a little for the what, camera. Uh, there you go. There you go. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, good looking guy. Yeah. And he was Army Air Force, right? He was Army Air Force, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he was a great guy. Tremendous uh, athlete. I mean, he, he, was, he was a bodybuilder without being a bodybuilder. He had, he had the muscle. It was just natural. And he was just strong as a bull. But great guy, really. My other brother. Tell us about this young man. Yeah. This is Dan. Because uh, always, he, always, always the fashion plate, uh, and uh, he uh, he really was a wonderful brother. But we didn't, we didn't know him too long. He he died as twenty one. He had uh, this cancer that. Uh, they just couldn't do anything about at that time. <laughs> anyway, he died in my father's arms, and uh, it just happened, that's all. He fought for five years after becoming sick, and he's 16, and then 21, he, was, he couldn't last any longer. So I think of them. I think of both of them very, very often. In fact, if not, 
every day. There's always one little something, little thing that comes up that reminds you of them, you know? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Should we? Is that something? Is, is that a hell diver up there? Oh, that's my. Uh, my uh, Can I bring that around? Graduation. Uh, yeah. to take it off the wall. Let's see, I'd probably. Strangle myself here. We'll, we'll get okay, we'll okay, good. Yeah. What's up, Beth? Anything else you'd like to share? Not, not really. I said, you, you did a good job in drawing me out. <laughs> you did a good job. Well, well you've done a lot. You know, every, time, every time you sit down, you, you remember other things and I knew things, but uh, um, I'm glad you came. Well, we're glad and, we came uh, too. Huh? We're glad we came oh, too. Oh, I'm glad. That's good. Very much enjoyed hearing your story, and uh, we'll get you a DVD that'll oh, uh, show you this whole little interview uh -huh. and uh, a couple of copies uh, for your family or friends. And uh, we want to thank you very much for doing this interview for the Library of Congress My and the pleasure. History Center. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank okay. you for your service. <laughs> You're welcome.